December 9th, 2000. This is Redemption. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Nerdarchy. For nerds, by nerds, I'm Nerdarchist David. Tonight I'm joined by this nerd. Nerdarchist Ted. How are you doing this fine and lovely evening, sir? Good, good, man. It's just, uh, it's been a fun day. And as, you know, I'm sure you know, there's a bunch of people here and they're here because we want to try and talk about the D&D movie. Uh, Prime Adam did a thing where you could go get a sneak preview of it and see it. It was like one time slot, participating movie theaters. Um, uh, I also saw Critical Role was doing something similar. Uh, I don't know how theirs worked, but I saw it afterwards. And and uh, I, like I said, I don't know how it worked. I, I just know we were able to get our tickets and go check it out. And December 9th, 2000, this is Redemption. <laughs> I, w- I would wholeheartedly agree. Uh, so we're going to try and do like spoiler free discussion about the movie. Clearly, this is not going to be a whole hour-long thing, so we'll transition to other topics and what have you. Uh, So, like, please weigh in in the chat as to what you feel is spoiler-free. We're certainly not going to talk about any plot, but there's things we feel that we could talk about, you know, as far as, like, non-context things that are in the movie that we Like, what do you guys think we can say? Like, can we list off the redeemed races we saw? Can we list off the monsters that appear with, like, and all that information without context? Do you consider that spoilers? Like, I don't know. I, I suck with spoilers because I don't really care about anything. And then, like, I have, I know some people are like, I won't watch anything until the thing comes out. I want everything to be fresh and a surprise. Uh, and, and I don't think Ted's quite that extreme, but he's leaning in that direction. I, yeah, I do try to not know. I, I try to know as little as possible so that I can enjoy it whole cloth and not have anything going into it. And, you know, reading reading the stat blocks that we talked about last week, there were definitely things that's like, well, this could go in this direction or could go in that direction. Because these weren't, oh, stat blocks inspired by these, like these are stat blocks of those characters. So like the things you see in there are indicative of what's in the in in the movie. Uh, you read those, you already know about those characters. And also, I guess like one of the things too is things like things that we've seen online already that via trailers, promotional materials. We're kind of looking at that stuff as free game as well. So again, if any of that stuff to you you consider a spoiler, now's your chance to duck out. Yeah, like so when you look at you know the the trailer and you see Doric changing into an owlbear and you know full well that you know she changes into an owlbear from from the stat perspective, like all right, clear as day, she can turn into an owlbear. Yeah. Uh, and like just seeing that transformation is pretty awesome, you know, in and of itself. Yeah, you know, so thoroughly enjoyable in my opinion. Yeah, so I mean, first of all, like the the whole movie is full of D and isms. They did they did a really good job of capturing what it feels like to be in a D and D adventure or story without you know without you know involving any of the meta plots. You know, like the gamers behind behind the characters being played or that it's a game or anything like that. You know, even even without any of that, they did a great job of capturing it. Um, You know, you could go throughout the whole thing and, you know, rattle off all the different spells that you that you see happening. Um, You know, some of them are a little tougher than others because um, you're you're getting a a spell that's been reflavored a little bit. But that happens in D&D. So I I was I'm totally cool, cool with it. Like, for instance, you know. Um, it appears on one of the D and D character sheets, so I don't consider it a spoiler. If you do, right now is your chance to bolt. But Bigby's hand, we see that in the trailer, but it looks like uh, I forget the name of the person, but Earth and Grasp, right? They look very similar, but that's just him. Oh, yeah. what's that? Maximilian. Maximilian. That's it, and that's just how that particular spell is presented. You kind of get you get like a lot of that stuff going on. But to me, I think that that takes a step in the right direction. 
you know, when we first started playing together umpteen years ago, uh, it was one of those things. The spells did a certain thing, and there was no reflavoring. Whereas now, like, I feel, you know, I feel awkward if I play a spellcaster and I don't make the spell my own, even if it's a, you know, a normal thing. Uh, and I've seen, D, you know, DMs across the board like, oh, well, what does that look like? You know, it's a very phrase. So, like, to have, you know, Bigby's hand represented in two different two different ways, I was like, all right, that's that's really cool. So, also, I say, I would say one of the things is like we can talk about the overarching plots as concept and not specifics, right? Sure. So, you know, you had pointed out the thing that you really liked, where the plots were actually very character driven. They're driven by one, maybe two characters, uh, which is very common for a D and D game. You know, that I've found in the past that you just have certain players that fall into their, those roles much easier or. They create backstories or and, and their backgrounds where those characters it's just so much easier for a dungeon master to come up with plots based on them. And this that totally happens. And then it's like all about getting the getting the MacGuffins to get the MacGuffins and you know, and also stop the big bad from doing big bad things. So I mean, if you really boil it down, is you have you have this arcing plot that is very character driven by one of the core characters then there's a easy tie in for a second character and well if you look at what the end result of what this is going to look like it's going to affect a third character in a positive positive manner and then kind of maybe the fourth character you know has has an you know uh, a reason for it as well so like i think from a writer standpoint both from it as a movie as well as a plot of a D story i think i think it's really well put together and then once you get to the end you then have the hey this very character driven story satisfies the hero's goal as well of you know fighting this big bad uh you know really really well done and as you kind of said at the very beginning you know the justification from all those years ago from the very crappy first one yeah yeah and did any of the scenes make you tear up tear up no uh to me there wasn't enough emotion here to to really you know draw me in uh there were definitely celebratory moments and totally laugh out loud moments um you know both from like bo- both with a, a a numbered you know count. Like I I could say multiple times I really was like laughing out loud or really happy about what was happening on scene. So I I found something really interesting about this movie that I've encountered with a lot of movies, but with opposite effects. Right? Like there's so many times you see a, you'll see a trailer for a movie and you're like, wow, this looks freaking amazing or this looks awesome, and then you go and see the movie. And you realize all the cool things in the movie they've shown you and there's nothing else. And actually, it's, those cool things aren't even enough to carry the movie. And it's, it really is just garbage. I will say, if you've watched a lot of the material that's out there, a lot of the trailers already and seen stuff, you actually are seeing a lot of the cool things in the movie. But the difference is they do a really good job of connecting those things and, and weaving it together and adding context to the cool moments that you've already seen that that isn't there. I, I would agree. Uh, again, I've only seen a couple of the of the trailers, and you know, my my not spoilers. I was trying to look at them just visually to to see, like, all right, you know, how much how, how much improved do we have our our graphics versus the very crappy. Poorly CGI dragons from the the original, uh, and you know, again, really well done. Really, really, you know, save of face with with uh, honor among thieves. Uh, but I, I was Im- I was impressed. Uh, there were only a couple of moments where I felt like, all right, maybe this this area has been drug on a little bit too much. Uh, I. From a movie perspective, the way I, I view things of, 
Does it keep me drawn in from start to finish? There were maybe one or two times where I felt like, all right, would I have checked my watch? Would I have, you know, if I were watching at home, would I have picked up my phone to, you know, double check this or, you know, whatever. But all in all, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm going to probably go see it again in the theater with the rest of my family. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a it's kind of a short movie, too. Um, it's, you know, it comes in under two hours. It's like an hour and 45 minutes ish. Yep. You know? Um, were you disappointed with any of the monsters, you know, seeing them actually in the movie? Like, cause we got the mimic, the dragons, the place of beast, gelatinous cube, Al Blair, and intellect of hours all in tri- all in promotional materials already. Of, of everything that I saw, uh, I was, I was impressed. I liked them and I was you know, mentally, you know, congratulating them that they didn't go with the emaciated displacer beast mm. with, you know, the not the direction that I like. So the fact that they made them more, you know, filled out and muscular like a panther. They did the third edition displacer yeah. beast. Yeah, which which I like. So I dig it. I, I love the way that they portrayed the displacer beast as well. Um, the, yeah, the displacement effect was done really well. And, you know, I won't say exactly how it was done, but the way they did it, I liked. And it's 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 a different uh, it's a different design than what I'm used to seeing as well. Ever I've never portrayed them or had a DM portray them that way. And that might be a cool way of doing them in the future. So. Yeah, yeah, I can't really get into that too much more without. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Any kind of like hunter type monster is really difficult to use in D and D because of the way the mechanics work, and it's not always to execute the hit and run style combats. It, you know the way a D and D combat works, but yeah, like all those cool things that I think like a, uh, I think that that type of monster could be used for, they managed to do it really well. And they also like this place your beast got its moments to shine too, you know. So that was kind of cool. Uh, as did the gelatinous cube. Uh, maybe not the mimic so much, but you know, I, I I felt the mimic got you know a better showing than the uh, than the gelatinous cube because like the gelatinous cube, I don't really feel like you ever saw it move. Oh no! It, well, first of all, <laughs> I believe their movement is like five. <laughs> so <laughs> their their whole shtick is just standing there and waiting for someone to walk into it. Like that's how it works. But also we did get a cool uh we did get the cool like, oh, why are they jumping into this gelatinous cube? Uh and, and it is so much cooler than the I think than the trailer made it look. Yes. Yeah, and, and that was that was a moment that I kinda like called out as well. Like, you know, and intelligent adventures are not going to just jump into a gelatinous cube. And when you watch the trailer, it's like, this is dumb. Why are they doing this? You know, what, what is the chonky dragon's name? I always forget. Ah, uh, you said it earlier too. <laughs> I, I, I did. Um, chat, help me out. What's the chonky, chonky dragon's name? But I mean, I there's... Lo- oh, cinder with cinder or something. Uh, there's a there's there's even like a stuffed animal of of that uh, dragon that you can get. Um. Yeah. And so I'm trying to see if I can pull it up. Th- oh, Thember Chad. Thember Chad. I might be pronouncing it wrong. Um, Chad. You know. You know what I mean. <laughs> chard. Thember Chard. But. I love him so much. <laughs> it's so cool. He, they get a, they did a good job of making him like adorable and then terrifying all at the same time. So uh, Teddy and I had a long conversation about him on the on the ride home. Uh, my son went went with us uh, to to go check it out, and you know I I, I could go into a whole a whole thing, but I don't want to get into spoilers, but. Uh, it was a really well done scene with with that particular dragon. So I, I I dug that because I'm used to seeing again dragons in a in a different light. <laughs> to have this chunky dragon come out doing what he does, it was just great. Yeah, it, it was, and you know, it was really cool to see him depict it like no dragon you've ever seen depicted in a movie before. So. 
you know, so that that was that part was pretty pretty exciting. And also like the overall character development throughout the movie. Um, you know, where it basically takes a you know, it takes kind of like new adventures and adventures and adding them to an old group kind of dynamic. And you know, it was cool to see them kind of grow together and stuff begin to mesh by the end. I I would I would say like, you know, you've got characters that are um you know, clearly have a past as well as adding new members. So you've got that those those connecting stories, which was fun. And the, you know, the the building the party scene as well as like straight up mention of backstory was utterly fabulous. Um so yeah. Also I will say so um I you know even before going I knew this was coming because I've seen like different things put out there, but they did the D and D car- cartoon adventuring party, and they threw them in there, and they got more time than we thought they were going to get. It wasn't just like, oh, is this going to be a thing in the background that you can kind of see? Like, I was really expecting this to be like the ET in the Star Wars scene, where it's like, oh, if you happen to look at the right place at the right time, here they are. But it was like, oh no, like. You see the scene, and it's definitely not a, oh, off in the bottom left-hand corner, here they are, while lots of stuff is going on. It's like, no, they're they're not forefront, but they're easy to spot. And then there's like multiple scenes thereafter where it's almost like, hey, we're going to shove this down your throat. Um, yeah, they're like, we we know there was a D&D cartoon. We know about that thing. <laughs> so I I really I really dug that. And, you know, with, uh, you know, the, the set from WizKids where you can literally get uh, the heroes of Stormwreck Isle, uh, you can get those those particular minis, you know, to be able to use those characters in your in your game. So I I definitely dug that, you know, they had, I mean, they weren't stars. I mean, I don't, I don't even think they spoke, but it was a it was a thing that they were there, and it was obvious. To uh, you have a favorite character, Dork, hands down. Dork, Dork is good. I you know I also like uh, Z- is it Zender Zander, Zenk. Zink, that's it. Um, I also like, yeah, I also liked his character. They did a really good job of kind of like adding him in as like your typical lawful good D and D paladin, um, without it being like too jerky. I, I th- makes sense. Like all of the characters were were well done, well portrayed. Uh, I felt though. Know, uh, I felt it was it was it was good to see all of the growth, all of the things, but I I I dug Doric right from you know right from the trailer, and she did not disappoint. Well, you know, Tiefling turning into Albers. I mean, it's hard it's it's hard to not you know not love that when she turns into more than more than more than horses and and Albers. We we can <laughs> safely say we can see what. What ends up happening? Uh, you, you get you get a good selection. Uh, th- I absolutely love the use throughout the whole movie of Holga and improvised weapons. I thought that that was <laughs> amazingly well done. Um, you know, I don't know who the who the fight scene you know choreographer was, uh, but they're an absolute badass with you know what they did. Yeah, I, the the fight choreography was really good throughout the whole entire movie. Um, again, like the, you know, the, there is definitely there's definitely some characters that really got the shine there, and that was a lot of fun in the the climatic battle scene. Uh, the choreography was so good there. The combination of fight choreography and special effects, it just all meshed together really, really well. Uh, and uh, the closest I'll try to come coming to a spoiler is we do get a puny God moment throughout the movie at some point. Uh, and I would just leave it at that. And it was, it was freaking amazing. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I was like, I was, I was totally shocked that that happened and it was, was o- only made that scene all the better. Um, so you got to see clever plans. You got to see great special effects. You got to see clever plans fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but what D and D game doesn't have that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, especially because you see, you know, when 
when a DM comes up with a story and the players come up with a plan, they don't know what the DM has already got planned. But if the DM is literally sitting there listening to how they're going to go about doing things, the DM can be like, all right, well, what if I put in this challenge? And what if I put in that challenge and make things a little bit harder to make them have to think on their toes and to make them do heroic things? Like all of those things come up. So like the plan A, B, C, D, E, you know, frequently happens at a D&D table when you're getting into these, you know, kind of games. So to have that actually unfold can be fun. Did you have any moments where you're like, yep, that was a that was a one. That was a 20. I wasn't looking at any of those. Uh because when I, when a fight scene is happening, I I tend to draw a draw like from a just a melee weapon perspective. Uh, I didn't really look at it that way. I just tried to enjoy it. Um, you know, when it was when they were throwing magic around, I was looking for that stuff to be like, oh, was that this or was that was that this? Yeah, I'll be, I will say it ran like a tabletop game, but if you're talking about the meta of a t- tabletop game, there was there was there was none of that in there. Um, which I, I believe Chris Pine has said you know, in the interview as well prior that there was no meta in the game. I've heard other people argue the fact that the D and D cartoon adventuring parties in it is meta in and of itself. Uh, but you know, I, I'll leave that to, uh, to more scholarly folks to, to argue out as to, as to what they think. Do you guys want to know what D and D races we saw? Cause uh, I don't think, I don't think we actually get a lot of them throughout the trailers and stuff like that. I don't know how spoilery, spoilery you guys think that is. Uh, but, you know, it was cool that you see the different D&D races get wrecked. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed seeing that, though, like, with some of them, I felt, you know, thing, maybe, maybe things were a little bit bigger uh, than I was expecting. Uh, but nothing so drastic that I was like, all right, that's too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, again, obviously too, like a lot of that stuff is open to interpretation, right? Like, even mm-hmm. like we've talked about beforehand, the fact that you have, you know, a tiefling with basically just Caucasian skin instead of being blue or purple or red or, you know, or something, you know, the only distinguishing things for the tiefling is, you know, the horns and the tail. Right. So, all right. So, uh, not the metal, just the way it played out. Yeah. If you came a little bit late, we were talking about that earlier and yes, absolutely. It definitely to me felt like a story you might find at one of your D and D tables. Matter of fact, uh, I feel like there was like a story, a side quest, and then like, redoing the quest you know like it, it, it wasn't just one like overarching quest per se um, well there was one overarching quest but a matter of well how are we going to do this so that's true but also like the overarching quest really came about because of a, a previous quest right uh like they where where some of those npcs if you're playing D get revisited or no so so all right so no one's complained about the idea of us mentioning the the races that we've seen all right so you definitely see like almost from the beginning a dragonborn uh and this is one of those that i felt like the the head was you know bigger than what i was expecting uh you know i just dragons have you know large snouts or large heads but i felt like this was a bit much uh but you see an arakokura you get to see a tabaxi all of which you know really meshed well in the world and it wasn't one of those things where like oh my god you don't fit here yeah um we get we get half elves we get ha- uh what i believe were halflings uh we have i think we have a we saw a dwarf uh, half elf is in the party, so obviously we had half elf as well. But, uh, you know, and this is this is up for debate, but I'm pretty sure the prisoner that's brought in was uh, was a bugbear. Okay, yeah. At first, I, I wasn't sure. I, I was thinking orc, but now that you mention it, could very well have been a bugbear. 
I'm pretty sure he had like the iconic bugbear hair and you know the the ears balls. Uh, so I that's the direction I would go. I would say that was a bugbear, and it's not like it's a major part of the of the movie. So it's it's just kind of like helping set the scene, if you will. Yeah, and then like I feel like a lot of the D and D monsters that we've seen really really did happen like in a lot of the trailers there's there was only really a couple that were were kind of new right that we were like we didn't know we were going to be be getting because between the, all the promotional material i mean we've seen the mimic the dragons displacer beast gelatinous cube albert intellect of hours giant spiders uh but there's, I think there was, you know, three, which one of which you kind of mentioned under races, which being the bugbear. But there was two others that I can think of that that appeared in the movie that uh, that we didn't see anywhere else. So yeah. the rust that, monster. Yeah, I was going to wait a little bit longer because there's a delay. But uh, yeah, the rust monster and the axe beak. And and those aren't anything that again is a is a major aspect of the of the plot. So it's not like it's given a whole lot away. Uh, and if uh, if I've ruined things for you, I greatly apologize by calling it out early. You, uh, you hunt Ted down and, and challenge him to a duel. <laughs> sure. What's you know what's another broken finger monster? <laughs> or I mean, you've been known for breaking a few fingers. So well, it's, it's going to be yours or mine. That, that's what happens when I fight these things. So. <laughs> Somebody's getting a broken finger. Uh, Just beware. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, when I when I look at it, like I was looking for, you know, these little throwaway, you know, concepts. I'm like, all right, who's gonna who's gonna show what? Yeah. When when you see the, you know, the 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 rust monster, I was like, oh, this is awesome. You know, more more D and D isms. You know, more things to to really sell me that they're in this world. Um, yeah, and. You know, I thought it was a lot of fun. Now, I will say, like, I don't know if you're going to watch this movie and get, like, the hardcore Forgotten Realm vibes, only because we don't really play in Forgotten Realms, right? So it's not like we spend a lot of time visiting these places. You know, like, our experiences are all through books, you know, novelizations, maybe video games. Um, uh-huh. it, with, without calling any specific things out, like they mention, you know, several different locales, uh, you know, in the, in the beginning, there is the scrawl of the, you know, the map and you see, uh, you see the characters go somewhere. Uh, so like all of that in and of itself, I thought was, was very indicative of the realms. Yeah. Um, I, I had kind of forgotten that one of the one of the characters' last names harkens to another very important figure in the realms, which I will I will not mention. You guys can watch it and figure it out for yourselves, or maybe you already know. Uh, but I just was not thinking about it. Like it kind of like once they said it, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. But I don't know. At a certain point, like I feel like I've forgotten so much about D and D from having played so long that you know. There's just so much information at this point. So, uh, you know, I, I I thought all of that was was fantastic. You know, when they when they call out, oh, they're from this place, or let's go to that place. Uh, I felt like that does, even though even if it's not major, it gets to those to those people who care. It gets the point across, which you know was the was to me, I guess, the point. Uh, so I'm gonna step off uh, off script for a minute and say, uh, you know, what what did you or how did you react, you know, to the scenario of uh, you know running into uh, you know somebody who watches the videos at the theater? Uh, I mean, I guess uh, if you're going to run into someone who's familiar with D and D YouTubers, that would be the place to do it. Um, th- but actually, they recognized you, like. Or I don't know if it was you or seeing us both together. I, it, but, you, can, you can go from either direction. But you you kind of walked into the late into the conversation because you were talking with with Steph, my wife, your sister, and then the guy's like, "Hey, do you guys like have a YouTube channel?" I'm like, "What's YouTube?" 
Uh, <laughs> and he, I was like, yeah, he's like nerd something. I'm like, so he's like not a, it wasn't like a fan, but he was someone aware that was aware of us. And he's like, I didn't know you guys were in New Jersey. I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, some of our videos, like the Wawa tea containers appear in the, you know, in the shot. So some people have pieced it together. Or if, you know, if you're from New Jersey, but you live someplace else, you, you'll recognize the accent sometimes. Or other people familiar with the Jersey will sometimes re- recognize our accents. But, you know, I'm like, I, I don't think we have an accent, but apparently other people think we do. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, I'm same boat. You know, this is just the way everybody talks. So you know, whatever. I don't know. Seemed like seemed like dude uh, enjoyed the enjoyed the movie as much as we did. So that was cool. That's fabulous to hear. Uh, I, I always run enjoy you know, running into you know the people that watch our videos because it gives us a chance to kind of talk to them should they so desire and you know see you know what kind of stuff they watch. You know what what reasons you know what what do they like about them. So if you ever see us in public, you know, just all, uh, always some come say hi, always, uh, you know, have a conversation. Um, yeah. So uh, also, I think worth mentioning is there is an after credit scene, uh, but there's only one. So once you've seen it, you don't have to stick around anymore. Although I will say them getting to the going through the credits is kind of cool because they do all this like paper craft style animation uh, that has some uh, like has a bunch of Easter eggs from D&D in general in it. Yeah, so so that part was was kind of cool. I was uh, I was kind of hoping for like the final after all of the all of the credits trailer to happen. Um, was not so no <laughs> no stay for the extra ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, as was I, but like the, once the curtains start closing, you're like, oh, I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I'm like, all right, is it coming? Is it coming? No, it's not. Damn it. <laughs> It's also too like sometimes I, I try to remember to check to see if there are after credit scenes before going, so I know you know if I should stick around or not, or how long to stick around for. But I don't I don't know like you know whether you can get that information prior to its essential official release because like that's that's where we're at. I mean it, today's the nineteenth. It doesn't officially come out for twelve days, so. Well, that's true. It may or may not have been out there. Although after today, I'm sure it is for sure. Uh, I, you know, we're mentioning it. Other people are going to mention it. But all, all in all, I, I really dug the dug the movie. You know, we can't we can't get into you know favorite scenes or you know favorite you know favorite moments because we don't want to give away those those spoilerific fun. 